Now, there's plenty of mumbo jumbo in the English language. And one of those incoherent terms is actually the words mumbo jumbo. Other confusing terms in this century are hold your horses or a stitch in time saves nine. And what the heck is barnstorming? I mean, I've never had a barn, so I wouldn't know what happens to it in a storm. So confusing. Well, let me explain it to you. The term barnstorming harkens back to a bygone era in America. It's etymology rooted in a very rural form of entertainment. It goes back to the 19th century days when theater companies used to travel around the country putting on shows. They would often set them up literally in someone's barn. So barnstorming born from that. But the term's meaning later morphed into something else after the Wright brothers invented the airplane. Instead of theater companies, traveling flying circuses became the new must-see event and attracted huge crowds. The Henry Ford Museum's curator of transportation, Matt Anderson, met me to talk about the men and women who brought the magical wonder of flight to the masses. Well, that looks kind of risky. It's a little dangerous, but that's the whole point of barnstorming. Aviation troops and flying circuses would travel to rural areas, usually set up camp at a barn, and put on these elaborate stunt shows. And where did the planes come from? Most of the planes that were being flown at that time were surplus World War I training planes. Especially for people in rural America, this must have been extraordinarily exciting. It was amazing when the, the flying circus came to town. There are stories of whole cities kind of shutting down so everybody could go out and see the show. And so there was this pressure to keep upping yourself, to make the stunts more and more difficult. What were some of the moves called? The loop-de-loop -loop is maybe the most famous, where you would just fly up and, yep, do Love a loop. that. The barrel roll, of course, where you're rolling on circles, the, the dives, the climbs. Formation flying was very popular, particularly if the pilots could get very close, almost wingtip to wingtip. And what is she doing right here? Well, we're looking at a, a wing walker here, and, and this would have been a pretty risky stunt, walking while the plane is upside down. She would have had a harness or some kind of a rope to hold on to, but there were some wing walkers who would go up there and make a point of letting go of the rope and just leaning into the wind. Many of the most daring barnstorming flyers were women, including Lillian Boyer, Katherine Stinson, and Bessie Coleman, the first African-American and Native American woman to earn a pilot's license. Were there any rules and regulations, or was it just a free-for-all? This is very early in, in American aviation, so it's really a free-for-all up in the skies. There are no regulations really until the mid-1920s. The Air Commerce Act is passed by Congress in 1926, and it's a direct response to the risks in barnstorming, and that starts to rein things in a bit. These death-defying performers were, in fact, true innovators, pushing the limits of aviation engineering and design while expanding the awareness of flight and its future potential to a rapt nation. What was the most outrageous stunt? A great example is Charles Speed Holman, a pilot who in 1929 set the record for the most consecutive loops, 1,093 loops in a row. I hope he hadn't eaten right before. <laughs> I hope not. Ugh. Who was counting? <laughs> That's a good question.